What is up guys, we're Williams, aka this Wolf Faster here to educate you on health and social well being. And today, guys, we're gonna be talking about body fat percentage, scale on the weight, and how I feel well, <laughs> I know a lot of people are misusing these things because these things are supposed to be tools to help us with body composition, but people are using them to try to compare themselves to one another or try to be like, why don't I look like this when I weigh the same as this guy? Or, oh, this guy must be this percent body fat because I can see his abs just like that. Things that I've kind of briefly touched on in past videos and I thought everyone had a pretty much good understanding of, but something that I feel like at this point probably could use its own video, so I'm gonna go ahead and address this. So, shout out to last underscore king underscore ghost. I believe that's right, I'll have his Instagram on screen. Just shout out to this guy because he, he genuinely asked pretty good question so this all started because the thumbnail that you guys see for this video i posted this picture on instagram last night basically expressing the fact that i am lean i am not shredded and i expressed the importance of knowing the difference that when you build a very very good foundation of muscle like as you guys know i've been doing calisthenics for 12 years and lifting weights for six years that when you build that good foundation and you decide to just chill at maintenance that you don't have to be in single digit body fats to look good you know what i'm saying like you can look great at anywhere from really 10 to 50 percent body fat because you have that good amount of muscle mass and i've talked about how like, you know people say abs are built in the kitchen but the reality is after like any other muscle group you can train them and build them up through strength and hypertrophy like any other muscle group but that yes you have to be at a certain body fat to see them well but that's like any other muscle group like if you have a whole bunch of fat on your arm even if you've been training for a few years you're gonna have to go on a deficit burn some body fat to really see like the shape of your bicep or your tricep etc and that the abs are no different in that way and i'll link that down below for any of you are interested in that because i go over things like you know how it fits your macros works in relation to like your abs and abs training how at the end of the day you guys already know calories in versus calories out but i'll go ahead and link that down below but i bring this up and want to talk about it because i feel like one it's perfect timing because next week on tuesday i'll actually be going to get my body fat percentage checked through hydrostatic weighing and i'll be recording it taking you guys through the whole thing because if i haven't mentioned it guys the only true way of like really testing your body fat percentage like the closest to getting exactly what you're gonna get is through hydrostatic weighing or DEXA scan. DEXA scan is currently the gold standard, but before it was around, hydrostatic weighing was the gold standard. They're both very accurate ways of going about it. Whereas things like skin full calibers, you know, the little BIA handhelds, those aren't exactly gonna be accurate. They're gonna be off by a few percentages due to just various things. They, do. they can't see everything that's going on with your body as far as your body fat. But I bring all this up, guys, because um, basically what King last i already forgot the name but it's on screen what the instagram follower what he asked and, and i'm sorry bro if you're watching this i appreciate you i really do i know who you are just the instagram names a lot of them but what he asked was for me to basically do a video over what different body fat percentages would look like and the thing is i, I told him there's no point in me doing that there's, there's no point in me showing what 10 percent body fat looks like versus 15 percent body fat because that's going to vary from person to person it's going to be different from person to person in the sense that 10% body fat on me can look different than 10% body fat or somebody else. Or that somebody who's 10% body fat with a good amount of muscle mass, it's gonna look very different than someone who's 10% body fat but doesn't have a lot of muscle mass on them at all. So that this mindset, guys, this thing that people do where they look at Instagram, they look at different people and they're like, oh, this dude must be like single digit body fats. I wanna go and I wanna like, you know, I need to get to whatever body fat percentage he's at to look like him. Or this idea that, oh, I can't see my abs unless I'm 10% body fat or under, which is ludicrous because once again, everybody stores their fat differently. You may be able to see your abs very well at 15% body fat, but maybe you can't see all the definition of your back. Whereas someone like me, maybe I can see all the definition of my back pretty easily at 10% body fat, but maybe I need to do a little bit more for my abs. You know what I'm saying? Just as an example, I'm not saying that's how it is for me specifically, but just for example, guys, and understanding that that's not the way to go about it. And there are even things like, and I get this all the time, people will be like, hey man, how tall are you and what do you weigh? And I have no problem telling that. I'm like, I'm five foot seven, about 160 pounds. And they get so upset and they beat up themselves, right? Because they're like, man, I don't look anything like you. Why don't I look like you? And I ask them, how long they've been lifting? Well, I've only been lifting for six months. Six months versus six years, of course you don't look like me. And people have to understand that. And then that goes into more things like people who want to try to guess like, you know, what their calories or their macro intake should be based off of you, which is a horrible idea. That's why I, that's one of the reasons why I don't get the whole like, day of eating things it's one thing i get that people want to watch people and see how they eat so that they can maybe get an idea of like different meals and stuff like that like oh that's very macro friendly that's calorie friendly i can try making that sometimes that's fine once again i don't have any type of special meals like that for you guys but the idea that people get that oh my caloric intake should be the same as this dude's that's insane somebody who's my height and my weight but works a five to eight job in the, in the office sedentary and has only been living for six months 
is probably honestly his his caloric maintenance level is gonna definitely be a lot lower than someone like me where I'm going around walking around throughout the day I'm training clients I work out I genetically have a faster metabolism that's the things that goes into it guys your genetics your um, just as far as your metabolism your activity level that's a huge one guys it can make a huge difference like two people can be like the same height weight maybe you've been training the same for the same amount of time but their activity level can make a huge difference as far as how much they have to eat to maintain that weight and then other factors go into like how much muscle mass you have on you things like that so that's why you have to figure out your own calories and determine your own macros through trial and error and see kind of what works for you like i said certain things are true for everyone across the board like you have to be in a deficit to lose weight surplus to gain weight but where you fall on that, as far as your total caloric intake is gonna depend on you. Well, the same thing, guys, is true for body fat percentages. It's so funny, because usually the fitness industry tries to sell things through you know, making everybody seem like you're an individual snowflake, and this special thing is gonna work perfectly for you, like you're somehow an exception to rules like progressive overload or calories in versus calories out. But in this case, it's more like the fitness industry has people thinking that everything's true for everyone across the board as far as your body fat percentage. You're gonna look different than somebody at 10% than somebody else it's as simple as that and it's understanding that those things are tools to be used when you step onto the scale guys it's a tool to be used to track if you're actually gaining losing or maintaining when you get your body fat percentage checked if you use a method that's not really accurate like a skin full caliber or bia handheld that's okay because it gives you a number to work with so you can use that and if you're consistent with it track if you're going up or down that's fine there's nothing wrong with using it for that reason but stop trying to assume that because this person's at a certain height or weight and body fat that you're going to be that you're going to look the way they do if you get to that point even if you have been looking for the same amount of time as them there's too many different factors that go into it as i explained muscle mass genetics just just so much that goes into it and i feel like that's really become an issue especially in the social media world people instead of looking at where they started and using these tools to gauge their progress of where they're getting and if they're getting closer where they personally want to be are trying to instead look at other people's progress and gauge their progress according to theirs you can't do that that's such an unhealthy thing to do mentally and then it's just not effective because what are you going to do when you get to a certain weight or get to where this person's at and you don't end up looking like them like you're going to get disappointed and feel like oh, i'm doing something wrong or maybe you're going to want to quit or maybe you'll do the right thing and come you'll ask me like questions like that which is cool but it's like you guys have to understand like the best ways to go about doing things like that. So I say all this to say guys, that ultimately go based off what you see in the mirror. And what I mean by that is yes, you can still, like you can track yourself with your with the scale, track yourself with body fat percentage checks, you measure your body parts, that's totally fine. But understand that one, there's gonna be fluctuations within your weight. Like losing weight, it's not a straight line. It's more like it's curved, it fluctuates, right? But it's all about are you seeing consistent change in progress over the weeks, over the months? That's what it really comes down to. And I would hope that a lot of this is already kind of known and understood just based off of me bringing things up like this brief in my video, but I'm giving it a whole video just so that nobody can ever say that I didn't go over this because I think it is very important. It's important to understand, guys, that anybody can look like they're 10% body fat or sub or like under 10% body fat when they're in good lighting and have a really good pump and stuff like that. But there's a difference, once again, between being lean and being shredded. One. If the people were enhanced, yes, they can probably trade all year round. And I mean, they still have their own share of health issues because they're on drugs, but it's not gonna be the same as you trying to be shredded all year round. Being under 10% body fat year round is not healthy for a natural. Like, there's a few genetic outliers where maybe they can get around like eight to 9%, but on average, 10% is the leanest that anybody should wanna be year round. And I say like, you know, if you're really trying to stay in like in the moderate lean range, like 10 to 15% body fat is kind of where you want to stay. But there's some people where they hang around 18, 20% body fat. Maybe they like have different goals and more focused on strength. They don't care about necessarily being like just lean, but as long as they're at a healthy body fat percentage, and that's totally fine guys. But it's really important for you all to understand exactly how all this stuff works in relation to yourself. This is one of those things that is very specific to you. You may have to get to a certain weight um that's different from what you thought it would be like like i've had plenty of people start cutting like oh i want to lose 20 pounds i think that's going to get me where i want and they lose 20 pounds and they look at where they're at and they're like you know what i'm not quite happy i'm gonna keep going and that's so much easier for them to do mentally when they've only been focused on themselves like, all right this is where i was this is where i'm at i'm not negating the process that i've made i made good progress but i just need to keep going versus the person who's like okay this person lost 20 pounds so now if i lose 20 pounds i look like them and then they don't look like them and they just get discouraged they, they discount the fact that they lost 20 pounds and that's just not good guys that's just not healthy so i say all that to say relax don't stress over it understand what these things are for these things are just tools to help you gauge your process they are not the end-all be-all of if you're progressing or not though even if your weight on the scale is kind of staying the same or fluctuating a little bit 
If you see the progress is happening, then you're good. You're on point. You're on track. You don't have to drop your calories by another 500. Now, if you see that you, your progress is stagnating, as I've explained before, that's normal. As you lose weight, your maintenance level calories goes down. Therefore, the amount of calories you need to be in a deficit goes down as well. And that's okay, guys. That's normal. All you simply have to do is bump it down a little bit and let the progress continue. So that's pretty much all I wanted to say, guys. Just expressing the importance of that and the fact that the fact that I was even asked to do a video like that, oh, show what 10 and 50% look like, it, it doesn't work. That's like, like he even mentioned this himself. There's so many videos where you've seen people do that and a lot of it's misleading because it all looks different. Yeah, because it is all different. I can find you somebody at 15% body fat who still looks better than somebody at 10% body fat. Or I even have pictures of myself. Like, I'm a higher body fat percentage now than I was a few years ago, but I look lean, I look better just because of more established muscle mass. So that's the main thing, guys. Don't get obsessed with being shredded. Don't get obsessed with these tools and these numbers. Just relax have a healthy mindset about it all, and focus on your own progression and getting where you want to be, wherever that is. And like I said in that Instagram post, which I'll also link down below in case you guys want to read it and check out the full details of what I said, your focus, your really, for most of your lifting career should be on building, not so much trying to get shredded and getting lean. You'll always have time to do that. You'll always have time to be on a deficit and lose weight and see what you have to work with. But focus on building that good size mass so that way you won't feel like you have to dive into single digit body fats to look good because you don't have to. Not saying that I look phenomenal or anything, but I'm definitely content with how I look when I just sit around maintenance and I'm not starving myself. That's it for the video, guys. If you enjoyed it, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you did. If you did not, leave a comment down below. Let me know what I can make it better. Like the video, share, subscribe, keep it simple, specific, scientific. I'll catch y'all later.